Hey guys, before this video starts, I really quickly want to talk about some new playmats that you guys can get on InkedGaming.com. So Nexus Core has playmats that you can purchase on Inked Gaming that are designed by yours truly. The newest ones I just uploaded were the Vanguard playmat logo design along with a Nexus Core Vanguard playmat. The Nexus Core one, which you may or may not have seen, is the one that I made. It looks pretty good, huh? This is one that you can get up on Ink Gaming as well. If you're a fan of this one, you can pick that one up on Ink Gaming. As well, there's ones with just like the plain Vanguard circle with the rear guards, the damage the deck, everything else. If you want a more simplistic design, those are up on Ink Gaming as well. They also can come stitched, like how this one has like the stitched ending going on on the sides right here. You guys can pick them up at inkgaming.com. There's a link in the description below if you guys wanna check that. I would really appreciate it. It would be a big support to the channel and to me bringing you guys more content and also so you guys can give some more feedback on what type of designs you wanna see in the future. Also, if you guys join the Nexus Core Discord, I'm always posting like updates on design ideas that I do for the mats as well. If you wanna see those, you guys can join the Nexus Core Discord as well. Thank you again for those who have already picked up some Nexus Core play mats. And without further ado, here's the rest of the video. Hey guys, welcome back to another deck profile. Today, we're gonna to be going over an updated version of the Grand Ezel Scissors uh, V Premium deck that came out in Volume Collection or Clan Collection Volume 4. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised how well I like this deck. And I know that the ratios are kind of weird and people are trying to figure out what's the best way to build this deck. And I think I figured it out. So let's just go ahead and jump right into the deck profile. Starting off is our starter, Crimson Lion Cub Kirif. It's really there for the aesthetic. I'm not running it for this, the Ezel Superior ride, but it is the OG Ezel starter. But you don't need Kirf for the skills, so you can run whatever starter you want, but, you know, OG Kirf. All right, now we're going on to the grade threes, like we always do, starting off with our four copies, Salvation Line, Grand Ezel Scissors. So Grand Ezel Scissors skill is, uh, the first skill is act once per turn. You put a grade three with Ezel and its name from your hand into the soul, and then you choose all of your grade threes of Ezel in the soul that's not named Ezel Scissors, and you get to copy their skills. So you, if you have Platina, uh, Raven, and Blonde all in your soul, you get to have you get to activate all of their abilities. The second skill is Act once per turn. If your opponent's Vanguard is Grade Three or Greater, and your soul has two or more Grade Threes, you kind of bless one. This gets an extra Drive check, and your opponent cannot activate their Vanguard's Auto abilities until the end of the turn. Then you unlock all your cards. So. It's an obviously big counter to Chaos Breaker. That's the whole point of Grand Ezel Scissors. But it also uh, counters Himiko, rev like Reverse, and any of the Genesis uh, V Grade 3s that have auto abilities defensively. So that was a fun thing to figure out while I was playing around with this deck. Um, but yeah, it's mostly just to counter defensive decks. So if you happen to be playing against Gurgit, they can't use their auto abilities either. So it's interesting when you realize, oh, there's a lot of actually V decks that have auto abilities activate on your opponent's turn. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. But the most important thing is obviously that it's cloning your Ezel grade threes in the soul. So we're running for that just so we can ride it as our main ride and you can feed it into the soul for cost. Next up, three copies of Blazing Lion Platina Ezel. So Platinum Ezel's skill is act, you kind of blast one, and then you get the ability where when you perform your drive checks, you look at the top two cards of your deck, and then you call one, put the other card into your trigger zone, and if you have two or more grade threes in the soul, you do it for your second drive check and more. So because Ezel Scissors gives you an extra drive check, you can do it three times. So it lets you build a board and you get to pick which triggers you want to activate. So Platinum is kind of like what really makes the deck really threatening, but I'm only running three copies because one, it's kind of searchable, and two, you get to reuse the effect when it's in the soul, and you have plenty of ways to get Platinum in the soul anyway, so there's no real need to max out at four, because after that it just kind of gets kind of clunky. Once you get the one in the soul, you don't need the rest of the copies. So yeah. Three Platinum Ezel, just for consistency's sake. 
Uh, next up, three copies of Raven Haired Ezel, which is like the threatening kill card. So Raven Hair's skill is um, if your Vanguard is Incandescent Line Blonde Ezel, and this is in your hand, you can blast one, and you can ride this card. So if you get off the Superior Ride with Wonder Ezel, and you have this in your hand, you can just go into Raven Hair. And that's kind of another helpful way to get two grade threes into your soul for both Platina and Grand Ezel Scissors. So that's great. Second skill is when it attacks, you counter blast one. If you have Blonde Ezel in the soul, this gets 15k in a crit and your opponent cannot guard with Sentinels. So combining, if you have Blonde in the soul, Raven skill and Platina skill, you can not only swing at your opponent's Vanguard with an extra crit and they can't use Sentinels, but you have Platina Ezel skill to look through which cards on the top of your decks you're going to be drive checking, and you have triple drive things to Grand Ezel Scissors. It does cost three counter blast, but for three counter blasts, you can pretty much guarantee to kill your opponent if they can't guard enough from hand. Plus, they can't use their Vanguard's auto ability, so they're going to have to use whatever's in their hand. So, Raven definitely is like a kill card, but you don't have to use Raven all the time. I do just like having the three copies so that. I know it's in the soul, and plus it's another Ezel. You can just shove to soul for cost just to copy, clone all the uh, all the abilities with Grand Ezel Scissors. So we are just doing the three Raven Hair, and then next up, I'm learning two copies of Blonde Ezel. This was a weird decision for me, but I figured that I wanted to stick with two. So we're only running two because we're not running back, uh, Bowman and Gareth. So we don't need four Ezel or Blonde Ezel, um, but we are running Wonder Ezel and Howl. So you can still search from the deck. And I know people are thinking you can just run the one copy and that's fine. I like the two because I want to be able to get off this pier ride just in case I either draw into it or I damage it so that I have two. And also it's an Ezel. So you can just shove an Ezel to soul for Grant for Ezel Scissors cost. So it still has purpose. And believe it or not, Blonde Ezel's skill comes in handy for Grand Ezel Scissors when it attacks. It's actually kind of like surprising within the playtesting how helpful Blonde Ezel has been. So Ezel's first skill doesn't really matter, but it's a uh, hand act. If you have Bowman and Gareth on the board, you Soul Blast one, you Soul Blast Kirif, and you ride this from your hand. We don't run Bowman and Gareth, so it doesn't really matter. The second skill is when it attacks on the Vanguard Circle, you call a card from your hand to rear. So this is helpful because it just helps you proc off Dindrain's skill. So that way you can get counter charge. So it's just like Vanguard attacks, call Dindrain, counter charge. It does help. So I do like it. And also it's an extra attack. So if you're swinging during the battle phase, boom, you call another attacker during the battle phase. So Blonde Ezel does help combining with all the other Ezel skills going on. Next up for grade three is my boy has fallen. He is now down to one copy in every gold paladin deck. But you know what? He just barely makes enough room for this deck. So shout out to my boy, Bluish Flame Liberator Percival. First skill is Van, continuous. All your units on additional rear guard circles get 5k. Second skill is when it's placed on Van or rear. If your Vanguard is grade three or greater, you cannot blast one, discard a card from your hand, acquire an Excel gift, search your deck for Aglavale, Call it to rear, or search your drop as well. You could do deck or drop. And then you can't use the ability Percival for the rest of the turn. Excuse me. So what I really like about this is that you can still call this out through Platina Ezel. So if you're doing your top two checking for drive checks, if one of them is Percival, you can call Percival, reveal the trigger, and then you're able to perform Percival skill, counter blast one, discard, search Aglavale, that just gave you an extra attack. And then if you're in the middle of your drive checks, you just then go on to the second or third drive check after that. So you can then apply more triggers to your board. So definitely like Percival in this deck. Percival's always been a great card and I've definitely found a way to make room to make it work. So if you really don't wanna run Percival and you wanna run more Platinum or more whatever else, Go for it, but honestly, I think this grade three ratio works really well. It's pretty consistent. Lastly, for grade threes, our heal guardians, Clarity Wing Dragon. So Clarity Wing and I have like a very like indifferent relationship when it comes to the Ezel deck because 
Um, the whole goal of the deck is to superior ride to grade three as soon as you hit grade two, but then the heal guardians don't really work after that. So it's kind of weird, but I do feel like I like having the ability to protect myself while I'm on grade one and grade two, kind of preventing myself from being rushed. So I'm running for Clarity Wing. The first skill is when it's placed on the Guardian Circle. If your Vanguard is not Grade 3, and if you haven't ridden a Grade 3, uh, you pick one of the following. You either pick your Vanguard and it gets 10k for the turn, or you choose one of your opponent's units that's attacking and gets minus 2 crit until the end of the battle. The second skill is when it's placed on the Rearguard Circle from your hand. If you have no damage, you put the top card of your deck into your damage zone, so it just gives you kind of blast. Um, yeah, Hill Guardians are very helpful for preventing yourself from being rushed and keeping you alive. Next up, we're going on to grade two, starting off with four copies of whoa, Flame Wind Lion Wonder Ezel. So this is what gets you the superior ride, and it also helps you proc off multi-attacking and Dindrain's ability. So the first skill is Act, Soul Blast a Soul Blast one, and then retire a Crimson Lion Beast Howl on your rear guard circle. Afterwards, you search your deck for a blonde Ezel, ride it onto your Vanguard Circle, and it gets drive minus one till the end of the turn, and then you shuffle your deck. So this helps you get to blonde Ezel really easily, helps you start filling up your soul grade threes, you acquire Excel gifts. Uh, if you have Raven in hand, you can then immediately ride into Raven Hair and then start going from there. And also, if you have Percival in hand, the minute you ride to grade three, you could just call Percival, kind of blast, and then start getting your Excel markers that way. Uh, the second skill is when this is placed on a rearguard circle, you may call a card from your hand. So this works if, you know, main phase, call it, call something. Uh, if it's called out through Platinazzle, you call it to a rear, get your trigger, activate the trigger effect, and then, you know, use Wonderizzle skill to call something. Um, yeah, so it can help you do multi-attacking, and Howl skill obviously is... You know, it lets you call something from hand and then you draw. So if you call a Wonder Ezel during the battle phase, you can call something else. So Wonder Ezel, very helpful card for this deck. Definitely want to run it at four. Next up, I am running three copies of Oath Liberator Aglavale instead of the four. Um, so Oath Liberator Aglavale's skill is when it's placed on the Vanguard Circle. Kind of lost one. Look at top three call something, the rest go to bottom. So it's a good ride target if you can't get the superior ride. Um, and it has a really great rear guard skill too. Rear guard, when it attacks, you put another unit uh, on your rear guard circle to your soul. This gets 10k and at the end of the battle, return this to your hand. So this helps you fill up your soul with grade threes as well. Cause if you ride a grade three, you call a grade three, you call Aglavale, you swing with it, shove a grade three Ezel into your soul, and now you have more Ezels in your soul to make Grand Ezel Scissors stronger, so to speak. Um, it's searchable by Percival, so obviously you're going to be shoving Percival into soul if you just need grade threes that way as well. Overall, I've got those a great card, a 19k beat stick, 24 on an Excel 2 marker, so Agavel's always been a great card in Cold Paladin. So the only reason I'm running three Aglavel and not the four is because I'm teching in one copy of Knight of Passion Bagdemagus. I really, really like this card. Um, it's essentially another Aglavel, but it doesn't bounce because it does get the power, but also it can snipe your opponent's back row units that are really, really, really annoying. If you're just like, I don't want you to have a board. I want to attack two things at the same time. I want to make your life a little bit difficult. So I'm going to run Bagdemagus. Um, obviously you don't have to run Bagdemagus. You can run another Aglavel if you want. I personally enjoy having Bagdemagus in the deck, so I will continue to run it. During your turn, this gets 5k for each grade three Ezel with different names in your soul. So if you have Blonde, Raven, and Platina, or if you have another uh, Grand in your soul, that's three to four, you're most likely gonna have during the game. So it's gonna be by itself a 24 to 29k attacker that can attack two things at the same time, which is really cool. And then the second skill is, right, if your soul has two or more grade threes, when this would attack it, it battles all your opponent's units in a column. So it doesn't declare attack on a unit, it declares an attack on the column. So if your opponent has something in the back row, but not something in the front row, you can just swing at the column and then attack that thing in the back row. So Gold Paladin finally has a back row sniper. <laughs> Um, after all these years. Um, and also it's Bagdemagus, it's a classic, you know? 
little 12k attacker from back in the day. So yeah, that's that's my one tech for the deck, just my little personal preference. And that's it for grade two. So we're only running eight grade twos because the deck has always been fine with that ratio. Starting off with a new card, we got four copies of Sacred Twin Beast White Lion. This card, I would honestly say, is the MVP of the deck. I don't think the Ezel deck would be nearly as good without this card. So it's skill, van or rear. Uh, when this unit attacks or the attack hits that it boosted. So when this attack hits or when it boosts and it hits, you guys get the idea. Um, and it hits a Vanguard. You look at the top six cards of your deck, search for up to two grade threes with Ezel in their different names, right? You reveal them and you put them into your hand. And if you got two, you put the other one into your soul. So if you look at top six and you found an Ezel, boom, it goes to your hand. Look at top six, you found two Ezels with different names. One goes a soul, one goes a hand. And this works on both van and rear. So if you open up your hand with two of these babies and you just ride one and boost with the other, 16 to van, your opponent has to make it one to pass, like just for like a fair guard, or they have to take it. And then you're looking basically through 12 cards in your deck and you're finding Ezels to kind of like pull off your combo. So um, this card would have been great if you're running Bowman as well and you just want to search Blonde Ezel to get this peer right off that way. I just feel like Blonde Ezel is kind of like stacked in a way for the most part. Like um, trying to get the extra Blonde Ezels in your hand doesn't really help. I feel like getting the extra Ravens and the extra Platinas is way more helpful. So that's why I think being able to use this card to search out Raven Hair for that superior ride helps way better. And obviously searching Platinum and Grand Dazzle to shove those to Soul and ride those. This card is just great. And also just keeping this in your back row behind your Vanguard for the whole game. And then every time your Vanguard swings, your opponent's like, I kind of want to take this, but I know if it hits, he's going to filter his deck. And also because you're filtering out your grade threes, that's leaving triggers in your deck <laughs> for when you drive check them. So this card is amazing. I love this card for the Ezel deck. All right, moving on to some more old school cards. Crimson Lion Beast Howl, four copies of this. Uh, you need it for the superior ride with Wonder Ezel, so that's one of the reasons why we're running four. Its skill is at the end of the battle that it boosted, if you have a great, if you have a Vanguard with Ezel in its name, you kind of blast one, put this in your soul, draw a card, and then you call a card from your hand. So if you combo this with Wonder Rezzel during the battle phase, you call a Wonder Rezzel, Wonder Rezzel calls something else, so you can multi-attack. Um, this card is great for applying pressure to your opponent because if you're swinging with these small numbers first, swing with this boosted, your opponent's at maybe like three damage, they take it, they don't get a trigger, you can move this to soul, call a new attack target, and then start pressuring your opponent with more like little pokes, like multi-attack multi pokes. The deck does get counterblast heavy because this costs a counterblast, Percival costs a counterblast, all of the Ezels except for Blonde costs a counterblast, so definitely keep that in mind for when you're planning out your battle phase, but you need it for the superior ride anyway, so definitely want to run four. Lastly, for grade ones, because I said we got counterblast problem, Four copies of Listener Truth Dindrain. Uh, Dindrain skills when it's placed by a card's ability, you Soul Blast one. You can either draw a card or you can counter charge and give it 3k. So plenty of ways for this thing to be called out from card abilities, Platinazel, Aglavail, Wonderazel. Howl can call it out with its own ability like move to soul, call something from hand, you call Dindrain, you get that counter charge back. So it's like you got another unit to poke with for free anyways. So, you know, Din Dindrain, I feel like it still needs to be a four of in the Ezel deck because the deck is so counter blast heavy. Um, I feel like it would be great if there was room for Josephus on top of the Dindrain because you can call Josephus from the deck when you're using Platinum Ezel skill to get more counter charge. Um, since you're filling your deck, your soul so much anyways, but, uh, there's just really no room. This deck is so tight when it comes to the space. So yeah, you know, you can maybe take out the Bagdemagus and throw in Josephus up to you guys. Um, but yeah, Dindrain is like the go-to counter charger for the deck. Now we're moving on to grade zeros. 
starting off with our four PGs, draw PGs. I was thinking about running the Sentinel crits in this deck because of how aggressive this deck can get. And I'm just like, ooh, like, it's crazy how like easily it is to just kind of go crit, crit, crit with this deck. So I was thinking about it, but there are a lot of situations when you're playing defensively and your opponent's swinging at you with these huge numbers that you're gonna want a PG. And you have so many grade threes in the deck that most of them are discard fodder or move to soul fodder for bezel scissors. So PGs, PGs are always, always been the way to go. And they're draws, draw PGs are great. Um, lastly for triggers, um, instead of going the front trigger route, which I know Platinum is known for, I decided to go with the, um, the crit trigger route, kind of more of like a, uh, a raven hair play style. Uh, the other main reason is because you are getting an extra drive check with Grand Ezel and you're copying Platinum Ezel's skills. So if your opponent's at like two damage and you pay the two counter blasts for Platinum and Grand just to get that triple drive, seeing two crits is very probable and seeing the third crit is just like icing on the cake. So you could push your opponent with four damage really easily if they're at two. So there's a lot of pressure there. And then even if they PG your Vanguard, putting those criticals on your rear guard still helps deal damage to your opponent. But obviously, if you want to go for more of a field building play style, like focus more around Platina and less on Raven, and Raven is kind of just more like, ah, oh, like maybe if I see it, I'll use the skill and throw it in there. I would say run front triggers. That's kind of like a more conservative, consistent way to play the deck. I love the more aggressive Raven hair kind of go-to play style. So the minute I see Raven hair, I'm like, in my soul, I'm like, I'm definitely using that and getting that triple drive off and then crit, crit, crit for game. So that's just me. But I feel like this deck is very like negotiable when it comes to the crits versus front. So you could even just do four crit, four front if you prefer that. But I definitely think the deck needs crits at least because it needs to be a little bit more aggressive and needs some teeth because it lost Percival for field building and the things that you call with Wonder Ezel and such, they're just like kind of small pokes. So if your opponent gets a defensive trigger, it kind of just like, eh, whatever. So the deck could use the fronts, but if you just want to be super aggressive with your Vanguard, go with crits, do the small pokes with your rear guards first and then finish with your Vanguard last. That's kind of what I like to do. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the deck profile. Um, if you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. And uh, if you guys wanna see some gameplay of this, cause you're just kinda like, I don't see the consistency, please show me how the deck works. Well, hopefully I'll get a game up for you guys soon so you can kinda see what the, the play style and how I like to play this deck, how it goes. So just to, to finish off the video, let's just show the whole legacy of where Ezel's been throughout V-Series. Um, I think that's it. I think the only thing we're missing at this point is just G units. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks again for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.